Hey guys, Ron here. I, we just had a live training session on the refrigeration cycle and I got a question regarding superheat and, and what's what are the proper levels. Well, each manufacturer has their different charging charts, but here is one that you'll probably run into on the systems that are about 8 to 12 years old, R22, and this is a fixed orifice system. So let's break this chart down just a little bit. So this would be on the inside panel of the condensing unit. So you'll take it off, the, the panel off, and flip it over. And this would be on a sticker on the inside of that panel. So first of all, these diagonal lines here are the indoor dry bulb, wet bulb temperature. And then this bottom line here is the outdoor dry bulb temperature. And then this is the superheat line right here. So you use all three of these lines to calculate the proper superheat for this fixed orifice system. So the first thing you're going to do is go inside the home and check the relative humidity of the indoor space. If it is above 70% relative humidity or below 20% relative humidity, you must use the indoor wet bulb temperature. You won't find these condition, conditions very often, but you still need to make sure that you're within the 20-70% range of indoor humidity. So you would, and we'll assume that we are within those ranges. So we're going to measure the indoor dry bulb temperature with our thermometer. And we measure 80 degrees Fahrenheit, so you follow the line, the 80 degree indoor temperature line down in this direction. Then we're going to go outside and we're going to measure the outdoor dry bulb temperature, 90 degrees. So we'll follow it up to where it intersects our indoor temperature line right here. And then we're going to read it over. To determine our superheat. And this is the proper superheat. This is what it should be with the 90 degree outdoor temperature and 80 degree indoor temperature. Once you've determined your proper superheat according to the chart, then you're going to calculate the system superheat using your pressure gauges and temperature gauges and, and calculate the actual system superheat. And we have already found the intersection of the outdoor temperature and indoor temperature to be about 12 degrees of superheat here. So if you measure your superheat and it's 12 degrees on the chart and you measure the, the superheat and it is within 5 degrees of what the chart says. So our chart in this example shows 12 degrees of superheat. If you measure anywhere between 17 and 7, you're not going to do anything. You're, you're within specifications there. The reason being is to make a 1 or 2 degree adjustment of superheat by recovering or adding refrigerant is very, very difficult to do because once you get within this range, ounces of refrigerant change the uh, superheat quite drastically and quickly and you could be there all day trying to get that dialed in so your plus or minus five degrees is a good rule of thumb to use and it's also the manufacturer's recommendations in this chart. If you find that the superheat that you measured is more than five degrees higher than what the chart reads then you need to add refrigerant. If it's more than 5 degrees Fahrenheit less than what you recorded on the chart, so your measured superheat is less than 12 degrees Fahrenheit, then you are going to recover refrigerant. And then after you either add or recover refrigerant, you need to allow the system to stabilize for 15 minutes before you recheck the superheat and then check it against the chart. And you will continue to do this until you get within plus or minus 5 degrees of the superheat as recommended by the manufacturer. And again, in this instance, it is 12 degrees Fahrenheit. 
All right, there's one thing that's interesting about this chart, and let's take a look at that and understand why this happens. So let's take our 80 degree Fahrenheit line and extend it down further down the chart. If you notice, there's a, a point right here on this chart. It says, do not add charge if the point falls below this limit line. So let's say that in, in this instance, it's 90 degrees at 10 o'clock in the morning, and we have 12 degrees of superheat. The indoor temperature doesn't change, and the temperature rises outside to 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So we take this up to up to the to the intersection of this indoor temperature line, and then we read it across, and we're at about three degrees of superheat. Now that superheat has decreased, even though the outdoor temperature has increased. And the reason that that happens is when the outdoor temperature increases. The pressure of the condenser increases, and in a fixed orifice system, if you increase that pressure, it increases the amount of refrigerant that flows through the evaporator coil. So that drives the superheat down. So you need to be very careful when you're charging a system when it's 80 to 90 degrees outside, and you're at you're at 12 degrees of superheat and you think oh I'm just gonna add it gets really hot here in the summertime so I'm gonna add a little extra refrigerant so that when we get those super hot days we can keep that uh, superheat at the proper level and that extra refrigerant is gonna help on those days when it gets really hot outside but the problem with that is if you overcharge the system a little bit over here in the in the 80 degree range and you overcharge it a little bit just for good measure and so you think what happens is instead of having three degrees of of superheat when it's 105 degrees outside you may end up with zero degrees of superheat and slugging the compressor during the hottest part of the the year so it, it's kind of counterintuitive it seems a little backwards from what it should be but that is exactly how this system works and all systems work when you're dealing with a fixed orifice metering device so make sure that you remember that so charge it plus or minus five degrees fahrenheit do not overcharge it for any reason because on those hot days you're going to slug that compressor